welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to the second to last video of Halloween. I cannot believe that I have made it this far. I'm not going to lie. When I first started out and decided to do this, I was like, am I going to be a fool and say I'm going to upload every single day for the month of October and then halfway through the month not do it? I was very worried about that. So I am actually shocked and very happy that I continue to do it and I'm very proud of the content that I put out this month. I'm so excited and I've had so much fun doing this. Um, but today we are going to talk about the books that I'm going to be reading on Halloween day. One of my favorite things to do on Halloween is to read spooky books and of course watch scary movies. Um, I'm not a partier by any means so I don't be going out to all these Halloween parties or doing anything like that. So I typically like to read spooky stories, watch spooky movies, and that's my Halloween fun. So I'm going to be telling you guys what books I'm going to be reading tomorrow. And I know this looks like a lot of books. And you're probably thinking to yourself, Holly, you're not going to be able to read all those books in one day. And that's 100% correct. Of course, I won't. Um, but most of them are small. Most of them are like kids books. So... I should be able to get through a lot of them. So first of all, I'm going to start off by telling you about these ones. So this one is the one that I'm currently reading right now. I'm only like a quarter of the way through it. So I'm assuming, because I'm filming this a couple of days before Halloween. Um, so I'm assuming that by the time that I get to Halloween that I will be done this first one. This is a series and I will be on to this second one. So the second one is the one that I'll be reading. Um, I should be done this one. So this one is, it's a starting of, I bought all of these books in a uh, recent book haul that you'll be seeing soon. Um, and yeah, it's a series. It's, it's a series called Asylum by Madeline Rue. And basically the plot is, I'm going to read you the plot on this one. It says for 16 year old Dan Crawford, the New Hampshire college prep program is the chance of a lifetime. Except that when Dan arrives, he finds that the usual summer housing has been closed forcing students to stay in the crumbling Brookline dorm, formerly a psychiatric hospital. As Dan and his new friends, Abby and Jordan, start exploring Brookline's twisty halls and sudden basement and hidden basement, they uncover disturbing secrets about what really went on here. Secrets that link Dan and his friends to the asylum's dark past. Because it turns out Brookline was no ordinary psych ward. And there are some secrets that refuse to stay buried. Featuring haunting found photographs from real asylums, this mind-bending reading experience blurs the lines between past and present, friendship and obsession, genius and insanity. So this is the first one that I am reading and it has creepy pictures in it. I'm pretty sure this person got this idea after the Miss Peregrines because, you know, once one person does it, it's wildly successful. All of a sudden there's a whole bunch of other people following it. But um, this one so far, like I said, I'm about a quarter of the way into it. Um, it's okay so far. It's very, it's definitely YA and I would say it's more on the young side of YA, which I'm kind of disappointed in because I have a feeling it's not going to be very scary. Like I thought, oh, these people are going to be staying in a haunted asylum. Like it's going to be scary. Uh, but I doubt it really will be because it's like the writing style seems to be geared more towards the younger kids. Um, but that being said, it is a very quick read. So I'm hoping to be done with this one and then on by Halloween I'll be on to the second one which I'm not even going to read the back of it because I don't want to spoil myself. I don't know if there's going to be spoilers on the back of it but I don't want to spoil myself from reading this one. So I'm going to read the sequel. There's like four or five of these books already. The next few books that I'm going to talk about are books that were on my October TBR and I am and I have been saving them for Halloween day specifically. These are all books that I'll be able to get through no problem. Um, the first one is a Goosebumps book because you cannot have Halloween without a Goosebumps book. Um, so this one is Welcome to Dead House. This one says Amanda and Josh think the old house they have just moved into is weird, spooky, possibly haunted. And the Town of Dark Falls is pretty strange too. But their parents don't believe them. You'll get used to it, they say. Go out and make some new friends. So Amanda and Josh do. But these new friends are not exactly what their parents had in mind. Because they want to be friends. Forever. So, I mean, it's goosebumps. It's perfect. It's Halloween-y. There's nothing more to even say about it. The second one that I'm going to be reading is An Adventures of the Bailey School Kids. Dracula Doesn't Drink Lemonade. And these are, are books that I read when I was a kid, and I've been trying to recollect them all. There's 
pictures in them as well. Um, and this one says, there are some pretty weird grown-ups living in Bailey City. But could the new guidance counselor really be Count Dracula, the famous vampire? The Bailey school kids are going to find out. You won't be laughing when Count Dracula nibbles your neck while you sleep, Howie warned. At least I plan to be safe. For all you know, he's a sickly cousin of Mrs. Jeepers, Melody argued. After all, who ever heard of a vampire breaking up fights? And I'm sure Count Dracula doesn't drink pink lemonade, Eddie added. So cute. And he's like, this is so fast. I mean, I could read this in 10 minutes. So <laughs> definitely we'll get through this one. The next book that I want to read is Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Harvest Moon. And I think I said this on my October TBR, but I don't even know if this is really necessary, necessarily a Halloween book. Um, but I remember when I was a kid reading this around the Halloween season, so it's always kind of remained a Halloween-y type book to me. Um, and these are, these are books based on episodes of the TV show Sabrina the Teenage Witch, which I was obsessed with growing up. And this one says, Sabrina would just love to zap Libby Chesler into the next galaxy. But then, what else is new? After all the work Sabrina has put into planning the Harvest Moon dance, Libby is trying to step in and take over. So what if a hip TV station is doing a news feature starring Libby? And so what if she's gotten the station to donate funds to the dance? Does that give her the right to run the whole show? Just about everyone seems to think so. Even Harvey's bewitched by Libby, the TV star. But Sabrina isn't giving up yet. After all, she's got magic on her side. What could possibly go wrong? Don't ask. <laughs> oh, I used to just like love this so much. I just used to want to be here so bad. Just like to clean your room, just zap, you know, use your finger, like move out there, move out there while you're sitting down, like being lazy. I still want that. The next book that I want to pick out is a choose your own adventure book. These ones are so much fun. I used to love these when I was a kid. And basically you just go through and on every, every time like you end a scene, you have a choice at the bottom there to choose what action you want to take. So if you choose one action, it'll take you to one page. If you choose a different action, it'll take you to another page. And you eventually, I think I remember I almost, I died like all the time. <laughs> I don't know if you ever actually like win the book, but, um, so this one is The Mystery of Chimney Rock. This one says, on your vacation in Connecticut, you notice a huge empty stone house at the, at the top of a hill. Some of the windows are boarded up, some are covered with vines. The old house known as Chimney Rock is so dark and gloomy that most people won't go near it. But you're the curious type. Should you see for yourself what's inside? Your cousin urges you to go ahead. If you say, I'll do it, turn to page four. If you say, no thanks, turn to page six. What happens next in the story? It all depends on the choices you make. How does the story end? Only you can find out. And the best part is you can keep reading and rereading until you've had not one, but many incredibly daring experiences. This sounds perfect for Halloween. A spooky horror house? I'm down for that. The last book that I want to read on Halloween is Agatha Christie's Halloween Party. And this is one that I have read several times already on Halloween. I mean, it's called Halloween Party, so it's a perfect Halloween read. Um, and this one says, at a Halloween party, Joyce, a hostile 13-year-old, boasts that she once witnessed a murder. When no one believes her, she storms off home. But within hours, her body is found, still in the house, drowned in an apple bobbing tub. That night, Hercule Pirwa is called in to find the evil presence. But first, he must establish whether he is looking for a murderer or a double murderer. It's so good, you guys. It's one of my favorite Halloween stories. Well, you guys, those are the books that I am planning to read this Halloween. Please let me know in the comments down below if you're planning on reading any of the same ones I am. You're probably not because this is a very random list of books. Um, but let me know what you are planning on reading. And I hope you guys have an awesome day tomorrow. I still have one more Halloween video coming up tomorrow. And then that is going to be it. So I hope you guys are having a great day. I will see you in the last Halloween video tomorrow. Bye.